In this video, we're going to be looking at solving equations with brackets and unknowns on both sides. Here is a problem you can have a go at. The sum of 3 times the number and 10 equals double the difference between 100 and 8 times the number. An example of a problem that is difficult without algebra, but with algebra, knowing how to solve equations, it's super, super simple. And we'll come back to this example at the end and show how it's done. So let's start with examples involving brackets. Example 1 here. I'll have 2 times x plus 3 equal to 10. There are a couple ways you can approach equations with brackets. You can either expand out the brackets first, or you can think about dividing by this coefficient of 2. So we could divide both sides by 2. Remember, whatever we do to the left-hand side, we do to the right. And the whole goal is to find the value of x and get x by itself on the left-hand side of the equation. So the first step, divide by 2, 2x plus 3 divided by 2 is just x plus 3. On the right hand side, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Next we want to do the inverse of plus 3, which is subtract 3, to get x by itself. So x plus 3 take 3 is just x, 5 take 3 is 2. Now let's do this problem the other way by expanding the brackets first. If I expanded these brackets, I'd have 2x plus 6 multiplying the 2 by x and then 2 by plus 3 equal to 10 and then subtract 6 from both sides subtract 6 2x plus 6 take 6 is just 2x 10 take 6 is 4 and then divide by 2 to get x by itself 2x divided by 2 is x 4 divided by 2 is 2 for this example I would probably suggest dividing by the 2 rather than expanding the brackets. Expanding the brackets seems to add a bit of extra working out in this example, and dividing by two first makes it a bit faster. But sometimes that's not always the case. So let's look at another example. We might have something like three times two take x equal to 13. Let's firstly expand the brackets. So three times two is six, three times negative x is negative three x, and this is equal to 13. Next, I have a plus 6 on the left hand side, so I want to subtract 6 from both sides, so subtract 6, plus 6 take 6 is 0, so I'm just left with negative 3x on the left, 13 take 6 is 7, and then divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, to get x by itself, negative 3x divided by negative 3 is x, and 7 divided by negative 3 is negative 7 on 3. Okay, now let's try dividing by the coefficient first. So if I divided both sides by 3, I would have 2 take x on the left hand side and then 13 divided by 3 on the right hand side. Next, I want to subtract 2 from both sides. Subtract 2. So 2 take 2 is 0. I'm just left with negative x on the left hand side. 13 on 3 take 2 that's kind of tricky, so I'm just going to write it like this for now. 13 on 3 take 2, I need to find a common denominator, so this would be 13 on 3 take 6 on 3, and I have that negative x on the left hand side still. Then negative x equals 13 on 3 take 6 on 3, that's 7 on 3, and then divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, and I have x equal to negative 7 on 3. You notice in this example, it was much faster to expand the brackets first rather than divide by that 3. So sometimes dividing by the coefficient of the brackets makes sense. It makes it faster. Sometimes it makes it much messier. A good rule of thumb is generally to avoid fractions where you can when solving equations. So if this number divides the number on the right hand side evenly, that might be a good first step. If it doesn't, Think about expanding the brackets first. Okay, let's look at an example with unknowns on both sides now. So example three, we might have something like x plus two equal to five take x. So what is the value of x here? This is kind of tricky to figure out without algebra, but with algebra, we can follow these simple steps and get to our answer easily. So when you have unknowns on both sides, what you want to do is aim to get all of the unknowns on the same side of the equation and all of the constants on the other side. So how can I get this negative x over to the left-hand side? Well, notice in previous examples, if I had a positive 6 
on the left, I subtracted it from both sides, then I would have a negative six on the right hand side. We can use that same idea here. If I have a negative x on the right hand side, if I add it to both sides, plus x and plus x on the left, that's going to get rid of, so when I say get rid of, what I'm really saying is uh, this negative x plus x becomes zero. So I no longer have any x's or unknowns on the right hand side. On the left, I'll have x plus x, which is now 2x on the left hand side. So 5x, five, 5 take x plus x is just 5. And that's what I mean when I'm saying get rid of this negative x. Next, we have this equation 2x plus 2 equals 5. This is just like previous examples we looked at. Now we want to solve for x. The inverse operation of plus 2 is take 2, so subtract 2 from both sides. Subtract 2, 2x two plus 2 take 2 is just 2x. 5 take 2 is 3. And then divide by 2 on both sides, x is going to equal 3 on 2. So there I divided by 2. Okay, so x equals 1 and a half. Let's double check that. 1 and a half plus 2 is 3 and a half. So 3.5 on the left hand side, 5 take 1 and a half is also 3.5, that passes the check. Okay, another example with unknowns on both sides. We might have something like 2x take 10 equal to 5 take x. Actually, let's make that negative 5, negative 5 take x. So now we have two negatives on the right hand side. Just like in example 3, we want to get rid of this negative x, in other words, add x to both sides, so that cancels out. So add x to the left hand side and the right hand side. 2x plus x is 3x take 10. Negative 5 take x plus x is just negative 5. And then we're at this point where we have one unknown on the left. We know how to do this already. The inverse of negative 10 is plus 10. So add 10 to both sides. 3x take 10 plus 10 is just 3x. Negative 5 plus 10 is 5, and then divide by 3 to get x by itself, or to get rid of that 3 there. 3x three divided by 3 is just x. 5 divided by 3 we can write as 5 on 3. And again, if you want to double check, substitute it into the original equation, make sure both sides are equal. Okay, let's have a look now at an example with brackets and unknowns on both sides. So we're going fairly quickly here. I hope not too quickly. So this is 2 times x plus 2 equals 7 plus x. The first thing I would do if I have brackets is look at this coefficient, 2. Does it divide the right hand side evenly? Well, 7 divided by 2 is not a whole number. So firstly here, I would expand the brackets. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times plus 2 is plus 4, equal to 7 plus x. Then I want to get rid of this plus x on the right hand side. So I have all of the x's, all of the unknowns on the same side. So I want to subtract x, uh, subtract x from the right. I also need to subtract x from the left. 2x take x is x plus 4 on the left. 7 plus x take x is just 7 and then subtract 4 from both sides to get x by itself. Subtract 4, x plus 4 take 4 is x, 7 take 4 is 3. So the final answer there is x plus 3. If I substitute it into the original equation, this would be 3 plus 2, which is 5, 2 times 5 is 10, 7 plus 3 is 10, that passes the check. Final example here, we might have brackets on both sides, so something like 3 times 2x take 5 equal to, let's add some fractions in, a half times x uh, take, sorry, plus 2. So what should we do first in this example? Well, we could expand all of the brackets. So just looking at the right hand side, we could expand those brackets, we'd get a half x plus a half times 2 is just 1. That's not too bad, but I have this half x, which is going to be a little bit annoying. So what we can do is we can get rid of this half here. How can we do that? Well, we can multiply by 2. 
if I multiply the right hand side by 2, a half times 2 is just 1. That would get rid of that fraction. If I multiply the right hand side by 2, I also have to multiply the left hand side by 2. 3 times 2 is 6, so I'll have 6 times 2x take 5. And as I said, half times 2 is just 1, so I'd just be left with x plus 2 on the right. So that avoids having to deal with any fractions. As I said before, it's generally a good idea to avoid fractions where you can. It just makes things a little bit neater. And a side note on the left-hand side here, when I multiply by 2, do not do this. So if I had 3 times 2x take 5 multiplied by 2, this is not equal to... 6 times 4x take 10. Uh, don't make that mistake. If you're not sure why this is, uh, I would suggest going back to factorizing and expanding brackets and you'll realize this expression was actually multiplied by 4, not 2. So again, 3 times 2x take 5 multiplied by 2 is not 6 times 4x take 10. So do not also multiply the numbers in the brackets by 2. That would be a mistake. Okay, let's continue then. What's the next step we could take? Well, check if you can divide by this coefficient of 6. 6 does not divide x or 2 evenly, so we'll expand these brackets first. 6 times 2x is 12x. 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. And then we still have x plus 2 on the right-hand side. What's the next step? Remember, we want all of the unknowns, all of the x's on the same side. So I would subtract x from the right-hand side. Subtract x and subtract x over here as well. So x plus 2 take x is just 2. 12x take x is 11x take 30 on the left hand side. Then we want to get x by itself on the left hand side. Add 30 to both sides. Add 30 and 11x take 30 plus 30 is just 11x. 2 plus 30 is 32 and then divide by 11, divide by 11, 11x divided by 11 is x, 32 divided by 11, we could just write as 32 and 11, or we could write it as a mixed number 2 and 10 on 11. And that is your final answer. So they are some examples of equations with unknowns on both sides and brackets. Let's go back to the original problem then. So the sum of 3 times the number and 10, we want to write this problem as an equation. We could write this as 3 times x plus 10. So we're calling the number x. And this is equal to double the difference between 100 and 8 times the number. We're going to want to include some brackets because this is double this entire thing. So double the difference between 108 times the number is 2 times 100 take 8x. And now we have our equation. The first thing we could do is expand the brackets on the right hand side. We will have 3x plus 10 equal to 200 take 16x. What do we do next? We want all of the x's on the same side. So add 16x to both sides. Negative 16x plus 16x is 0. 3x plus 16x is 19x plus 10 equals 200. Subtract 10 from both sides. We'll have 19x on the left. 200 take 10 is 190. And then divide by 19. 19x divided by 19 is x. 190 divided by 19 is 10. So the answer to this problem was 10. And to double check, we could substitute it back into the original equation. 3 times 10 is 30 plus 10 is 40. On the right hand side, 8 times 10 is 80. 100 take 80 is 20. And 2 times 20 is also 40. So that passes the double check. I hope you found this helpful. I hope I'm not rushing through this stuff too quickly. Let me know if there is anything in this video that doesn't quite make sense. Please leave a like if you did find it helpful. Subscribe if you want to see more content and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.